All right, so I've been working on this project. If you've been following along, I've been having lots of problems. It's my first Magnum caliber. I'm just not really familiar of what is required. So one of the problems I was having is the bipod I got, which was an Accuracy International, and I absolutely have to run this bipod because the point of this rifle is to be a clone of the Arctic Warfare, and after I get my pistol grip taken off so it's just got a thumb hole, it'll be as close as I can get with the parts that are available. Well, one of the parts they use is this bipod. Well, the problem I had is it had zero retention. Like, there was no pressure on it whatsoever. So, like, my rifle would just flop around like this, and I'd have to keep constant pressure on it while I'm aiming at the target. So, like, you can see my heartbeat in the scope. And I, I shot decent groups. Like, I shot sub-MOA with this, but the consistency just wasn't there. I wasn't getting sub-MOA every time. And yes, now that I've learned that the barrel heats up, I know that I can only do small strings of shots. Like, if I'm going to shoot a group, it's got to be, like, less than five shots, like three shots. But anyway, so I finally came to finding a part that fixes this. I had to order this from the UK. But basically, it took out the original stud, and then it hooks on there, and then I can apply tension by cranking this. And now it's rock solid. Like, I cranked this bad boy down... This rifle is rock solid, and I hope it makes a difference because when I put a solid bipod on the shredder, my average group size shrunk by one MOA. I was getting between like 1 to 1.5 MOA for my average group size. I threw on the different bipod. Yes, I also had replaced the glass on there, so it was more magnification so I could actually see my target. The point is, I'm hoping that one of the major advantages I got was when I changed the bipod and that's what brought the group size down so much because that had pressure on it. So I'm hoping now that I got pressure on this one, I'll have a much better group size. Holy crap, that's a lot of deer. Anyway, sorry, ADHD. So what we're going to be doing today is go through it again and seeing if I get a better group. I'm hoping I am because I have a more stable platform to shoot off of now. We're going to start with the cold bore shot and we'll probably do three. If they stay under sub MOA, we'll go up to five. And then we'll shoot another five-shot group and see how things all pan out. So, as soon as the range opens up here, we'll start shooting.
All right, so here's my cold bore shot, then the four subsequent shots. Man, I just cannot get consistency out of this because this is definitely over one MOA from there to there. Not by much because the square would be a one MOA square. So it's probably like 1.25 or some shit like that. And then that's definitely over one MOA from there to there. That's got to be like 1.25. Of course, I'll maybe go in from the center of the hole. I don't know. I'll have to use the app and measure it. So as you can see, it was off to the right. So I corrected one MOA over. Or it was, yeah, I corrected one MOA left. Brought us to this one. My first shot, second shot, third, fourth. And then I don't know if I got excited because these were all nice and tight. And I pulled one. Or what the hell happened there? The shot felt good. I don't feel like I pulled it. But again, like, all right, so it'll be... Maybe this is under one MOA, but if it is, it's just barely under. I don't know why. I just can't get consistency out of this rifle. All right, before I jump on the 300 PRC, I'm going to go back to the 22 and see if the Kestrel can give me an accurate drop call. I have two targets set up, one on top of the other. The other, one, the top one's a shoot and see. That's where I'm going to aim, so if my call's way off, hopefully uh, the wind is varying drastically, so I don't even know what kind of wind call to make. Last time I had to dial, what was it, right, 2 MOA, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to shoot and then see if, like, it would still need a correction and if my drop is correct. All right, I'd say come up 23.7 quality. Basically 24 MOA. And it says move left a half of an MOA. So let's give that a try. So I'm gonna go left, 0.5. And then up 24. Holy crap, I made a major mistake in my last video. Nineteen twenty. Uh, we're only going to come up 21 MOA because for some reason I thought in my last video 25 was one revolution, but it's not. So, yeah, we're coming up 21 MOA. We're going to give that a try and see what happens. I did make contact with the target. The 
appears I gotta move left two MOA. Unless that one was a flyer. But we'll move left two MOA and see what happens. Alright, let's see what we got. I can't tell. So now we're going to th shoot the 300 PRC and then we'll go down there and check things out. So let's unload the 22. All right, so the ballistic information for the 22 is junk because I made a major screw up. The profit, it says I should come up about one MOA. Let's get this stuff out of here. I got my parallax set. First shot, dead center bullseye. Second shot, high of bullseye, off to the right.
don't know, maybe half quarter of the way. All right, third shot, more right, maybe an MOA and a quarter. Oh, uh, four shot, I don't know what the hell happened, it's so far right. Damn near miss. Looks like fifth shot landed on top of second. Right, let's go down there and check it out. All right, so the first target is my 22 target. I fired six rounds, and then I adjusted two MOA because I had spotted this one through my scope. So I figured, you know, two MOA over. Uh, looking at it again, well, I yeah, got two MOAs about right. So I got one hit, two hit, three, four, five. I don't see number six, but I'm assuming number six was over here because I bet you my three shots were like this. You know, judging by the size of this group, they were probably like right there. So it's probably somewhere over here. But I did get impact using, you know, my previous experience. All right, so with the 300 PRC, shot number one, shot number two, Shot number three, I'm gonna say I pulled number four. Otherwise, I'm just gonna smash my head against the wall trying to figure out what the hell happened. Cause I mean, yeah, there's shooter error. And looking at the rest of this group, I had to have. And then shot number five. So assuming I pulled this one, one MOA would be two squares. So one, two, it is about one MOA. Counting this one, it would be one, two, so that'd be one MOA. Like one and a quarter MOA, obviously I'll figure it out exactly with the app, with and without their shot, and then post that. All right, so the Kestrel says I should come up 20, 20.2, so go 20.25, and it measured, uh, it, it's a varying speed wind. It's from three to eight miles an hour, and it seems to be changing directions from coming this way to going straight across. So I'm not really good at environmental, so we're just gonna we're just gonna wing it. See how it goes. We're gonna be shooting at the bottom target because the only size holes that are in that are 30 cal, so let's put some 22 holes in it. I need a little higher rest. Wait for a break in the wind. All right, we're dry. Let's go check it out. All right, I was holding right here. It might have been too much because all my shots are right there. Uh, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 shots. I have no idea how many were in the magazine. None in the bullseye, but it's right about where I was holding. But it kind of feels like there's a consistent crosswind about halfway down the range, so I thought I would have to hold off to the side a little bit. 
Maybe I didn't have to because I did wait for a good break in the wind, but it feels like a consistent three mile an hour coming from this way. Uh, and I actually that would have been right, but I corrected. I got to go double check my scope, but I think I corrected one MOA left, which would put my point of aim right there. So maybe my hold was correct, but because I threw the adjustment on my scope, it's over. But when we get back, we'll take a look at my scope and see if I still have an adjustment on it. Okay, so I still do have an adjustment on the scope of a half MOA. So my hold was close, but what added up with the adjustment? No, then I was off center. So let's tear off the adjustment. We're gonna make one more attempt at this to try to land them on the center. All right, same situation. I have a varying wind from three to eight miles an hour. It's coming from this way and then it'll switch and come across. So depending on what the wind's doing, I'm gonna hold left side of target. It's still saying I should come up about 20 and a quarter of a way. Wind's pretty calm, so I'm just going to hold off center. Oh, it's starting to pick up. I'll hold a little farther. Now it's picking up a lot, so I'm going to hold a little farther off. And I'm dry. Let's go check out damages. I did get a couple in there, but looking at my pattern, which is like right in here, I probably should have held just a little bit more that way on a few of the shots, but I see a lot of these doubled up. So I was pretty damn near exactly where I wanted to be, but the wind is changing so much. I have a hell of a time trying to figure out where I was going to aim. Cause at some point when the wind would basically stop, I'd be aiming like right here. And like right now where it's really picking up, I was aiming like over here. So much to learn about 22.